Right, so we've just had this delivered this morning and uh, it's uh, something a little bit different than what we usually repair and it's a DJI Mavic Mini drone I believe and uh, there is a note inside here and the note reads Hi iRefab, I accidentally crashed my drone into a tree and it fell from quite a height now my camera won't work and it keeps making a funny noise. Could you repair this for me, please? Thank you. Okay, so that's all we've got to go by at the moment. And um, if I have a look here, there's a bag here with uh, six little screws inside. So I assume somebody has uh, tried to open this before. And there is also a conveniently a nice little screwdriver here as well. So we'll put these two aside for now. And the first thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to switch this on and observe and see what this problem is. And we'll see if we can figure out what's going on. Right, so let's take it all apart and get it switched on. Yeah, I can hear, I can hear a, a distinct noise from the camera. What I'm going to do is I'm going to switch the uh, compressor and the gate off. So you can hear that noise, right? Just give me a second. Okay, so what I've done is uh, I've switched the gate off on the microphone and I'm gonna bring this near to the microphone and hopefully you should be able to hear this. Can you hear that noise? So the camera is making a funny noise. Now, normally, you should be able to control this from the gimbal, but from the information that we have on the server from the customer, we've been told that the camera is no longer controllable. So the image does come through on the receiver, but the, uh, the camera is no longer, the gimbal part of the camera is no longer controllable from the remote. So I'll just switch the remote on and I'll try and demonstrate that and show you that as well before we start opening it up and uh, having a look at what's going on inside. But can you see that uh, can you see that movement there? See. Yeah, I think that's quite clear. So let's have a, a close look at the remote and see what kind of messages we get on there. Yeah. So we have the DJI remote and an iPhone connected to it. And it's connected to the drone right now. But as you can see, the image from the camera is just vibrating. And I can confirm that there is no control of the gimbal from the remote. So I'm not able to control the movement of the camera from the remote and all you get is a vibrating image like this. So that's the problem and uh, now we're going to try and find out what's going on. Right, so I've had a closer look at this and uh, I think I found out those four screws that came in the bag where they came out from and if you have a look here under the battery cover and if you remove the battery, right, which I'm going to try and do now, remove the battery, let's get that out of the way. If you have a look inside here, um, let's try and zoom, get that in. Yep. So if you have a look inside here, right here, inside here, one screw goes inside here. Okay. Another screw goes inside this bit here. Can we get that there? Yeah. There's another screw inside here. So that's two screws that you need to take off from here. And then if you come around the bottom, we've got another one two screws which need to come out from these two points here and then if you come around to the top near the gimbal there is another two screws one here and one here that needs to come out so those are the six screws that need to come out and once you get them out this uh, top piece here it's just attached with clips so you should be able to just come around from the back and give it a little nudge Right, don't put too much pressure because there are some plastic clips on the day and you don't want to break them. 
So I'll just give it a little bit of a bit of encouragement. If you've got a little tool like this, that will help you actually. So we'll just do that while we're here. Okay, so as you can see, it just comes off with a few clips. And uh, if you want to have a closer look, there's two clips here at the front. And then there's um, a couple of, cli couple of clips here. One, two clips here at the side. And uh, there's a few fittings here at the back. But that's what basically all it is. Once you get that off, right, you can have access to the inside of the drone. Now, straight off the bat, I can see here that something here is broken. Can you see that there? If you have a look here, this piece here is actually broken from the gimbal. So that's something we're going to have to uh, order a replacement for. But that should not affect the... Uh, the noise that the camera is making and the way it's vibrating. There's got to be something else that's going on here. Now, if we have a closer look, we can see that there is a cable that comes off the back here. Okay. And then it comes into the, uh, the camera here. And that cable goes all the way down in the bottom. It goes into the flight controller which is underneath here. So there's also a piece that comes off the back of that and goes into the GPS module here. And then there's a sensor that comes around here. If you can see here, it comes around here, it comes around here, it goes up here, and then it connects into this piece here. And that looks like it's attached with some kind of um, white uh, white glue. So, before I start, um, as I say, the camera, the pic the, we know the, the camera is working because the image is fine. So, it's got to be something either around here or it could be something on the, on, the, on the circuit board itself. But, before I touch anything on the circuit board, I want to inspect this cable just in case anything has come off anywhere where it's supposed to be connected at the bottom. So we're going to take this apart and uh, we'll have a closer look under the microscope and we'll see if we can spot anything. So to remove this cable from the top, this piece here, we need to remove these two screws and that should allow us to take this cable out. And then uh, we can, um, this one's glued on, so we'll have to remove the GPS unit from these two screws here. And then I think that GPS unit, the whole piece will just come out. And then what we'll do is we'll release it from the, from the flight controller, which is at the bottom, right here. And uh, we'll, we'll take a look, closer look at that cable and see if we can find any issues with it. So let's do that now. Okay, so as you can see, I removed the two screws from here. Okay, and I'm going to push this back. And that gives me access to this connector here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to disconnect that just use a tool like this, a plastic piece of plastic, and we'll disconnect that. Okay, we've freed that now from the camera module. Um, as I say, this piece is broken, but we'll look at finding a replacement for that later on. I want to inspect this cable first. So now what we want to do is we want to free this cable here, and that is attached to the underside of the GPS module here. So to do that, we're going to have to remove these three screws. One, two, and three. So let's remove those three screws and let's see whether the cable here is glued underneath or whether you can just clip it off. You've got to be careful here because there's uh, two motor wires that are rooted underneath this uh, plastic piece here. So you want to get them out. And then if you have a look on the other side, uh, there's another three motor wires here that are rooted um, underneath here. So we're just going to push them out with this. Like so. OK, 
Okay, and we're going to do the same on the other side. Okay, and that should allow us to lift this piece off. And as you can see here, it is actually glued on from the bottom. Can you see those, uh, those two glued tabs here, here and here? So to release that, what I want to do is I want to go under the microscope to make sure that we don't damage anything. And while, they, while we're there at the same time, we'll also remove this sensor here. We'll get to this glue and we'll, remo we'll remove this sensor here. So let's do that now. Here is a close-up of the underside of the GPS module. And uh, as you can see here, it is attached with some glue on both sides here. So what it is, we don't want to uh, apply any heat around here because there are a lot of sensitive uh, components. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually heat up the tip of the craft knife under the heat gun. And I'm going to use it to slice through this glue. And hopefully we should be able to free this cable. Okay, so we've heated that up. And let's see if we can uh, get through this glue. Do that from here. Okay, so we've managed to get that off without any damage to the connector. Okay, so we can put the GPS module to the side temporarily. Right, so as you can see, there's some kind of a sensor here on the side, which also comes off that same cable. And we have to remove this to get this sensor out um, to be able to remove the entire cable. So again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a little craft knife and I'm going to attempt to uh, remove this gently. This one's not too strong, actually. So it should just come out like so. And we'll do the same here. And we should be able to now just pull this out from the bottom. Yep. So that's been freed from there. I think this cable, the one that goes from here all the way around here, I think it's attached with some kind of glue. So if we apply some very light heat along uh, the back here, that whole piece should just come out. So I'm going to apply about 200 degrees of heat and I'm going to attempt to just pull that out. So just do that now. So we've managed to free this cable from the underside of the GPS unit. And what we also did was we removed this sensor here from the side. And this cable along the back of it, it was glued on to the case here. And we just applied 200 degrees of heat. And that allowed us to just pull that glue free and uh, free the cable for the sensor. Now all that remains is one cable that goes into the bottom here and connects into the flight controller at the bottom of this case. And to do that properly, this piece here, I don't know if you can see, it's actually glued on from here. So we'll have to apply a bit more heat here and get the glue to come off from here. That will free that piece. And then there's one piece that goes from here all the way into the bottom, into the flight controller. So we'll open it from the bottom and see if we can release that from, from the bottom. So to get the bottom off, it's quite easy. It's just clips on, on this one here. So what you do is you grab it from here, okay, and um, just try and lift it from here. There's no screws holding this down. So if, you get that, if we get that orange tool again, and we just try to come around here, Right, you can see that's come out, coming out quite easily. Okay, so we've got that off, you can see. It's just a couple of clips at the bottom here. And you want to push it in with your, with a plastic tool, and you should be able to just get that out. To be able to get at uh, that plug, we're going to have to see if we can take off this, uh, this cover here, and then if we can get access to the connectors on the side of the flight controller. So let's do that now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove these two screws here, one and uh, two, and let's see what we can do. And uh, can this come off? 
Yeah, it seems to be able to come off. Oh, there's one one more screw behind here, which you can't see, which you're going to have to take off as well. Now, when you remove this screw, I believe your warranty is going to be void as well. So make sure you, you know, if, if, if it's under warranty, obviously you can get, you can see if you can get it done through warranty. But once you remove this sticker here, I believe your warranty is going to be void. So you have to make that decision where you, whether you want to go through this with this repair or not. This piece now should just come out. Yep, as I thought. Right, so we can see here, clearly there are two connectors here. Okay, now I don't know if both both of them are for that uh, cable or if it's just one of them. So I'm going to double check that now. And I think there might be some glue on these connectors as well. So I might have to do the same procedure again under the microscope. But let's follow this cable back down and let's see uh, where they're coming from. Right, so I've had a closer look and there's one cable that comes directly off the camera. I believe that is, um, I believe this is for the image. And this one goes and connects into this point here, right? And then the other one is for our cable, right? And that one connects into this point here. This point here. So this is the one that we want to remove. So let's get under the microscope and let's deal with the glue for this one here. We're back under the microscope now and as you can see, this is the connector that we need to remove. And again, it's glued on with the kind of glue here. So what I'm going to do is again, I'm going to heat up the blade to about 300 degrees. And I'm going to attempt to come in and uh, release this glue, cut it from here and release this glue so I can pull the cable up. And hopefully that will allow me to pull it out from the bottom. So let's do that now. So we've got our blade heated up. And I'm just going to come in and I'm going to attempt to uh, cut melt this piece here. Be careful now, you don't want to go too deep because obviously you've got a PCB underneath here as well. All right, I'm going to do the same from the other side. And I'm going to try and do the same on the other side best as I can. I think that should be enough for me to come in with the plastic wedge now and pull this up. Yep, that's fine. So we've freed that and you can see we haven't caused any damage to the connector underneath. Okay, so let's take that out. Do you remember that piece that we took off from the front camera here? If you have a look here, that is actually glued on from the bottom inside here as well. So we're going to have to apply a bit of heat here to get that off. What we'll do is we'll put 200 degrees of heat here and uh, we'll just gently um, push that off. 200 degrees, just make sure that you're not going to melt anything. There we go. And that's off. So originally I thought we would be able to pull this connector through the space between the flight controller and the case here. But it appears that we won't be able to do that. So what we'll have to do is we're going to have to lift this case slightly from this side and pull it out. And to do that, we're going to have to disconnect two of these antennas here. So you can come with a sharp object here and you should be able to just lift these up. You can see, just lift them up like that. And that should now allow us enough leeway in the back here to get that piece out. So let's see if we can do that. Yep, you're going to have to pull this piece out here. So this will have to come out like that. And then what that will do is that will allow you to lift this piece up slightly. There you go. That will allow you to lift this slightly and just give you a little bit of a leeway to get that piece out from the back down here. So we can push that through now. Okay, and that piece 
has just come out. So finally we've got it out and this is the cable that uh, I think there's maybe an issue with this cable. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this under the microscope and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to see if there's any damage to it anywhere. Okay, so let's do that now. But this is what it looks like. This is what you're looking at. You've got a sensor here and you've got two connectors here and here. So let's get this under the microscope and let's uh, have a closer look. Okay, so first of all, going back down from that sensor, there doesn't appear to be any damage here. A side sensor. Let's move on. Okay, and we can see here that the cable is fine. There's no breaks in the cable here so far. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to test check the rest of that cable. Going down here. This here is not a break in the cable. This is a, they actually put a mark here to show you where to fold it to fit it back into the case. So I know there's no issues with that. If we come around here, this bit looks fine so far. Then if we inspect this part of the cable, moving back up, there doesn't seem to be any issues or any breaks here. This part seems fine. And now all we have to do is just test, check this part of the cable. And I cannot see any significant issues here. Oh, wait a minute, what's this? Aha, uh -huh. look at that. Look at that. Can you see that? I think there's a break. Yes, there is. There is a break in the cable here. Okay, I think I've found what our problem is. When he crashed in the tree, not only did he break the frame of the gimbal, but this cable here, let's have a look from the other side. Yep, definitely there's a tear in this cable. So my uh, my thoughts were correct on this and uh, we have a ripped cable so what i'm going to do is i'm going to locate this cable online and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to replace this cable and see if it fixes fixes the issue if it doesn't then we'll start looking into the circuit boards and the components and the camera so that we need to get that ordered in first so let's do that now so before we go looking for that cable, replacement cable, what I also want to do is I want to release the camera from the gimbal housing here. So we can have a closer look at this piece and then we can figure out whether you can order just this piece on its own because I believe you can. So to do that, what I'm going to do is to release the camera from there, I'm going to open these two screws here, this one screw here, and also there's a screw inside here behind this uh, cable that should allow me to free the camera from here and then uh, focus on this plastic piece here so let's do that now so we're going to open this one here this screw here as you can see and then we've got one more screw so that's allowed us to free the cable straight away from here and we've got one more screw inside here just got to hold the gimbal from the, the camera from the bottom while you do this so there we go. I've got the second cable out from there. Sec I've got the, I've got the second screw out from there. Now, when you put these screws down, do put them in an organised way. Otherwise, when you, when you got to put everything back in, you might get confused. So now that should allow us to drop this camera, from the bottom, here, I believe. To have a close look at that, what we'll do is we'll release this here from these mechanisms here. If you have a look here, there's a. A rubber grommet that comes through here one on this side and uh, one on this side so we're going to release them and to release them is quite simple you just push it through right you can use uh, a piece of plastic if you want i believe those should just come straight through yep so as you can see that's just come straight through through here and it will be the same on the on the other side so you can just get a little piece of plastic like that and just push it through Okay, there you go. So that's the broken piece. That's come off. And uh, 
that's that piece out from there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to release it from the bottom. So if you have a look here, there's another two pieces here that need to come off from the bottom here. And that should release the whole mechanism. So let's do that now. Okay, same again here on this side. I can get that a bit close up. Okay, there we go. And that should free the whole camera mechanism. So I've managed to have a closer look at this now. This part here, the dampening mats for the gimbal, you can actually order this on its own. But to take it off, it's a, it's a very big job. I think you need a special tool to press this out from here. And there's a, a lot of stuff in here that needs to come apart. And it's not going to be economically viable for us to do that. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some very strong special, because we've got the other piece here, the piece that broke off. We've got a good area there that we can glue that on. So we're going to use some cold press glue. And uh, you can get that off AliExpress as well. I'll show you in a minute what it looks like. And we're going to glue that piece back on because it's not very heavy. The camera itself is not very heavy. And I believe that glue should be OK, should, should give it enough strength to hold it in place. Um, but that's the best we can do with that for now. So. The cold press glue, this here is what it looks like. It comes in a, a tube like this. And um, it's got very small ends on it. And you can chuck these away and put one new, new ones on. And it's got a very, very thin opening at the top. So that will be al allow us to get some precision glue onto that piece. And hopefully that will be strong enough to keep it back together. So let's do that now. Right, let's see what we can do with that. So while we're waiting for that glue to dry, let's talk about some of these parts and uh, some of the issues with replacing them. Now, I did a bit of research and um, this part here is called the dampener or the mount for the gimbal. And uh, if you go on AliExpress, you can actually find it. It's, it's called Original Gimbal Dampener Mount for DJI Mavic Mini 1.2 SE Drone Shockproof Vibration Absorbing, Absorbing Board Bracket Repair Parts. That's the uh, search terms that you'll use to find it. And this is, this is what it looks like. Ours cracked from here. So as I was saying, you can buy this whole piece for about, about 10 pounds you can get them for. But the issue is that to take this piece off from the rest of the gimbal, you need uh, this special tool here. And it's got like, um, it's like a little press, a mini press, and it's designed to take apart that piece. So you have to press uh, a piece out from the top of this um, this piece here to get it to separate from the rest of the housing so you can replace it. Unfortunately, we don't have that tool here. And as I was saying, it wouldn't be economically viable to order all of that in to repair that gimbal. Um, if it's something that you're going to do regularly, then you may want to look at invest in investing into one of these tools and keeping it in your shop. But um, this is the first drone that we've ever had in for repair. So at this moment in time, it's not worth it to get this in. And uh, it wouldn't be worth it to the customer because the repair fee would just go up exponentially. exponentially. So for now, what, we've, what we're going to do or what we did was we just glued this piece back on. As I say, this uh, whole camera is not very heavy. And if you use some good strong glue here, I'm going to show you what glue we used then I think it will do the job. So the glue that we used is called cold press glue and we use it on uh, mobile phone frames and the plastic around the frames and stuff and it's very strong glue. And uh, you can get it in clear. The one that we had was clear, the one, the, one, the one that we demonstrated in the video. This one here is black, but it's the same thing. And 
as you saw in the video, we had a pusher to push it out, but you don't really need that. If you're going to use it occasionally, what you can do is you can just use some something and give it a little bit, bit of push from the back. Bring some of it out onto a, a piece of card and use a toothpick to apply it to wherever you need to apply it or the head of a pin or a needle. And um, when you put it, once you've finished with it, you can chuck these pieces away and then you can put the cover back on and uh, you can put it back into, into, a, into a tight seal bag and that will stay fresh. So that's the glue if you want to use the glue method. If you do want to take that apart, then obviously you know now that you would need to buy this tool as well. Right, so we've covered that. Now let's talk about the cable that we need to order. I've done the research and uh, found out this is the cable that was uh, damaged. It was damaged from here, so it tore from here. And this is uh, what it looks like, okay? And when you come to search for it, there's the sensor that we took off from the case. So when you come to search for this, the, way the terms that you're gonna use are three-in-one flexible flat ribbon flex cable for DJI Mini 2 SE drone gimbal camera GPS IMU replacements, replacement parts for DJI Min Mavic Mini 1 and 2. So you can see here, it's all the same. I think it's pretty much the same cable. So this uh, cable here, we're going to order it in. It's £4.57. And once it gets here, we'll... Uh, continue with the rest of the repair. So let's get back to the demonstration table. Well, it's been 24 hours now, and as you can see, that glue has dried quite nicely. And that's the other side. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna put it all back together, and hopefully we should have a working camera and a working drone. Now, the first thing that we wanna do is we want to reroute and uh, attach that cable that we got. That cable's been delivered, by the way, and this is what it looks like. If you have a look here, this is this is the packet that it came in. I don't know if that bears any resemblance, but here's the cable inside. Just want to show you a close up of that. All right, if I put that down here. Okay. So here is our replacement cable. And as you can see, it's got um, pre-attached glue on the back of the ribbon. And all you do is you just lift off those blue tabs and uh, you can attach that into the case. Okay, so let's just quickly put that back together. And um, also, what I, want, I might as well mention this right now actually, these uh, connectors here at the top, these connectors, once they're fitted onto the flight controller and the various other connections on the board, what they use, they use a glue. It's like a, it's like a type of hot glue. If you've used hot melt glue from a glue gun before, that is the same consistency and the same, same type of glue that they use. But what I recommend is you use uh, something called heat sink plaster. Right? It's much more flexible and it makes it much easier to take off for the next person who's going to work on it. And this is what it looks like. Right? You can get these off uh, AliExpress. It's called heat sink plaster. They're quite cheap. They're only a couple of pounds. And um, they come in little tubs like this. And it's really easy to apply. Right? It's like a white paste. And when it dries, it dries very strong and it's very flexible as well so what it's really made for is for components on uh, circuit boards that produce heat and have heat sinks so it's put between the heat sink and the component and it's really good at transferring heat but it's also one of the properties is it's very flexible and it's quite strong so for those connectors i think this will be uh, a better alternative and that's what i'm going to use and i thought i'll thought I'll just quickly show you that. Okay, so here goes. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to um, put this back through the bottom here and uh, make sure the main cable is attached into the flight controller. Then we can reroute all the rest of them. So let's do that now. 
So as you can see, I've got it over here and I'm just going to press it into place. Okay, so as you can see, I've connected that connector here back on. What we're going to do is just get a pair of tweezers and just give it a little push from the top in the center, in the, on both ends and in the center, just to make sure that it's made a, a good contact. And once you're satisfied with that, all you now need to do is just reroute re some of these um, antenna cables, which I'm going to do. This one comes up from here, and then it comes through here. Okay, which we can just push that in with your hands, really. Just use a piece of plastic, something that's plastic, not too sharp, and just push that back into place, like I'm doing here. Let's get that here for you so you can see it. Okay, that's fine. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use the back end of the the plastic tool here. If I can get that in focus. And we're just going to push the antenna connectors back into position. Let's do that now. That's number one, antenna number one connected. And we'll do antenna number two. That's antenna number two connected. Okay. Then all we have to do from here is connect the three screws, one, two, and three, which we'll do after we put the heatsink back on. So we'll do that now. So here goes the heatsink, goes back on like that. Okay. And, uh, but before we do that, what we want to do is we want to put some uh, heatsink plaster on that connector here. And we're going to do that now. So you'll see how I do that. It's quite easy. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to get a uh, a dollop of that heat sink plaster on the end here. If you can see that. And I'm just going to put a little bit on a piece of card here, like so. And then um, I can use that now. I can show you what it's like when it's applied. So all I'm going to do is uh, put this light off so you can see that more clearly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some here on the end of my plastic piece like so. Okay, that's all you need. And then what I'm going to do, put the light back on, is I'm going to apply it onto that connector. So as you can see, what I'm going to do here, just need a little bit on this side. Okay. And then we need a bit more on the other side and that should be fine to hold that in place so what we're going to do now is we're going to get the connector and uh, we're going to put that on okay so what we're going to do now is uh, we're going to put the heat sink back on and uh, we should be good to go so let's put the heat sink back on and remember those three screws that we took off from the heatsink. I'm going to put them back on now. Those three screws, they're more or less the same size. So I'm just going to um, touch them. You don't want to make it too tight. Be careful because you, you're screwing into plastic. And you don't want to tear out the internal threads. So don't overdo it with the tightness. Just keep it um, gentle. Firm but gentle. Okay. So that's that, right? Now what we've got, all we've got to do is we have to uh, route this cable back into its proper place. Okay, so we've uh, put the heat sink back on the bottom and uh, we've got our cables which have come through here. One, two, and three, okay? Pay attention to what I do with this cable now because this cable has to twist round and it has to glue itself on here. So watch what I do with this. I'm taking it from the bottom and I'm just going to reroute it through here. Okay, can you see how I've got that through? Yep, you can see what I've done. And if you have a look here, there's a little plastic tab. You need to take that tab off and then you need to fold this over and stick it inside there. Right, so we'll do that now. But before we do that, let's remove the tab from here and let's stick this on. There's a tab inside here on the back, on the inside. Can you see that? Can I get you to see that? It's like a blue tab. 
we have a look inside here. Can you see that blue tab? Yeah, the one that says T6. We've got to take that tab off and we've got to stick that onto that plastic piece there. So we can do that now. Okay, so I've got that tab, right, with my tweezer and I'm going to rip it off. Can you see that? Okay, that's all you have to do. Okay, and then what you've got to do is you can use your plastic tool and just glue that into the back here. Give it a little nudge and a push from the back. And you could even use um, a, what do you call it? If you can't, if you really want to, if you really want to get in there, you could use the, um, you could use one of these earbuds, and uh, you can push it from the back, which I'm going to do, to give it an, a bit of strength. So you can see what I'm doing here. Okay. So I believe that's on quite fine for now. You can see where to stick it on because if you have a look here, there's a line just here and that line and that corner needs to match up with this line and this corner here. So that's fine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to remove this tab. We're going to fold this over and we're going to stick it in here. So that's how you want it stuck in. So what we'll do is we'll use our bod and we'll just put some pressure here to make sure it's nice and sticky. To make sure that it's uh, attached quite firmly. That's good enough. Right, now what we're going to do is we're going to attach this piece here. But before we start attaching it around here, what we want to do is we want to sit in the housing and uh, we want to put some... Um, heatsink plaster on it. So with this one, what it is, it's got a little line here on the inside if you have a look here. And you've got to fold it on that line. You can see that here. It's quite hard to get in focus. There's so much stuff in focus here, that's why it's quite hard to get it in. Uh, there we go. If you can see that line here, you want to fold it around this line. And you want to take it around. And I'm going to show you how you do that. It's quite easy. Well, it's not quite easy, but I'll show you what it looks like. Yeah, so you want to get it like this. That's the kind of fold that you're looking for. You want to have it folded, uh, folded like that. Okay. So before we do that anyway, I want to get this here, and I want to put this back in, this sensor here, back into the sensor housing, which I'm going to do. You can see what I've done here. I put that back in and I'm just going to push that down. Yeah. Okay. And then what we're going to do is we're going to use some heat sink plaster to uh, attach that piece on before we start rooting it back around and stick it back, sticking it back onto the case. So if you remember, just like before, I had the heat sink plaster out and I'm going to take some here with my tool. Okay, I'm quite happy with that. Now we can route this cable back all the way around. I don't know what you can see from there, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to remove the uh, all the plastic pieces from underneath here and I'm going to route it back here. You might need two tweezers for this, one to hold the cable and one to pull those uh, those pieces off. So that's number one. So on the back of that cable, you're going to have five tabs, like these plastic tabs. You've got to take them off, and then you can route the cable around, and wherever you want to stick it to, just push it with the bud, and uh, that cable will stick. So we've finished routing that cable and I just want to show you a close-up of how it goes around. If you can see there, it's quite hard to get it there. So you can see it comes up from the back. It attaches itself to the inside case like that, goes around this way, and then it goes into the sensor connector on that side there. So I, th I think that's quite simple. 
and easy to understand. Let's move on to attaching the rest of the cables. So at this point, what you want to do is you want to fit the gimbal back into the housing. Then we can uh, focus on attaching the rest of the cables. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this gimbal back in. Right. The gimbal is quite easy. So what you do is you uh, get it like that. Bring it up from here. So that's going to go over. That's going to attach on that side. So yep. So what we're going to do is we're going to bring the cable gimbal in and we're going to attach it from the bottom side first. So to attach it to the bottom, it's just the reverse of the way we took it off. There's two connectors there that need to two rubber two rubber pads there that need to go in. So let's put them back in first. I'm going to try and get it as clearly as I can. It's all black here. But um, right, let's try and do this as easily as we can. So we've got these two grommets here. This one's going to go into here and through here. Okay, so we've got number one successfully in. Let's put number two in. Okay, so we've got the bottom two attached and uh, it's just the reverse of taking them off, as you can see. And now we're going to attach the top two. Same procedure in the top. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to fix this piece back down here, this piece here. We're going to fit it into this hole here and uh, we're going to attach the big screw. So let's do that now. Then what we're going to do is we're going to connect this top connector here, this one here, into this connection here. And to do that, you'll have to hold the gimbal from the bottom. So when you put pressure on it, it um, it's firm from the bottom. So we'll hold the gimbal from the bottom. And we'll just align this in with our fingers, as you can see from here. Do it as best as you can. Okay, and I can confirm that's in because I felt the click with my finger. And to secure it in place, this falls over and there's two screws that go and hold it in place here. There'll be one screw here and one screw here. So we'll just put them on now. Remember, don't over tighten these because you'll strip the threads on them. Okay, now all we've got to do is attach this cable here to the back of our GPS unit and uh, we should be good to go. So here's the GPS unit. Remember, we took that off earlier. It's got three screws, right? One, two, three. And uh, But before we put that on, we're going to stick this um, connector on and we're going to put some uh, heatsink plaster on here as well to hold that in place. So let's do that now. Okay, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to go under the microscope and I'm going to have to clean up some more of this glue because the new connector seems to be slightly bigger than the old one. So here's the issue that we're having. There's still a bit of hot glue left on the corners of this connector and it's not allowing me to put the new connector on. The thing is, if I apply heat here, it's going to make a hot mess. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flood it with alcohol and I'm going to try and pick it right off. So let's do that now. Let's apply some alcohol here. A bit more alcohol. You got to be careful when you're working around here because there's lots of little components. There's capacitors and tiny, tiny capacitors around here. So just be careful. All right, here goes. Try and come in and free this from here. Actually, I've got a better tool for this. I don't want to use a knife around here because I don't want to damage the circuit board underneath. So this tool here, 
should be ideal to try and get this off. Yeah, if we can get alcohol to get in underneath here, that should just come straight off the board. Oops. Okay. Can you see what happened? We don't want to do that, right? And that should be fine. There's no issues there. But um, we'll be a bit more gentle on this side. Can you see how that just came off? So if you can get alcohol underneath that connector, that will just come straight off. Okay. So let's free this up a little bit first. I'll be a bit more gentler, gentler this time. See, if this was uh, originally the heat sink plastic, it would be a lot easier to get this off. So you want to work it gently, and then you want to apply more alcohol so it gets into the underneath. And then the more alcohol that gets underneath, the less that adhesive is going to work, and it should just pop right off at some point. Can you see? Can you see how it's getting weaker? All right. So we just got to keep doing that, and it should just come off. Okay, it's starting to get there. I can feel it coming. Yep, I can feel it coming up. There we go. And that one came cleanly right off. Okay. So what I'm going to do, just as a measure of precaution, I'm going to put some um, solder mask here and cover this bit so it doesn't make any contact with the with the board. And we'll just do a quick repair on that. Solder mask, if you don't know what solder mask is, I've, if you're looking through some of my older other videos, you can see uh, what it is and what it's used for. But generally, it's used to cover exposed areas of the circuit board um, when things like this happen. And there are other uses for it as well, but uh, I'll quickly show you how it works. So I'm going to get some solder mask. What you do is um, you apply it where you want it to be, uh, what you want to cover, and then um, you use a UV light to, uh, to cure it, and then that will protect that area of the board. Let me just... Uh, Put some air on here to dry this up. And that should be good enough for now. Let's apply some solder mask. You'll see now how I apply this solder mask. What you do is you put it on the tip of your needle, on top of a needle, and you just bring it down onto the board like this. Okay. And it dries like a, like a resin. So it dries quite hard. And it means that uh, nothing is going to touch this copper part of the board. Right, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get a UV light and I'm going to shine it on top for about 30 seconds. And what that will do is that will make that resin dry hard and uh, it will protect that scratch on the board. Okay, so we're just going to bring a UV light over this. You can see I'm shining a UV light on it. So that's cured now, and if we zoom in, I'm going to zoom in a bit, and I'm going to show you what this uh, solder mask does. Okay, so you can see that now. Now watch. When I take my needle and I touch this, you'll see now it's gone hard. Can you see that? Can you see how it's dried hard? It's no longer runny, is it? So that will protect that exposed area of the board, and that's fine. Okay, so we're ready to uh, attach our connector, and hopefully it should stick on now without any issues. Okay, so here we go. I'm going to attempt to stick this on. Okay, and when you're putting this back on, you want to hear a distinct click when the connector goes on, and that will confirm to you that it's... Uh, it's on properly. So, as you can see, I've reattached that there. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to use some um, heat sink plaster here as well, just to hold it in place so it doesn't come off. The heat sink plaster does dry up quite fast. So, uh, 
you may have to get some more out of the pack if you don't use it straight away, which I'm going to do now. Don't need much, just need a little bit on each side. And that should be fine. So let's put this back on now into its place. Right, we need to bring these cables back out from underneath and reroute them back into place. And remember, there were three screws that attach to the GPS unit. So let's attach them now. Okay, so as you can see here, we've attached the GPS unit with the three screws. We've rerouted the cables that come off the motors, and uh, the cable is attached here from the bottom. Okay, so you can see that. That should be fine. I'm going to check that out under the microscope. Okay, so I was a little bit worried about that nick in the cable, but, but under the microscope I can see that it's, uh, it's absolutely fine, there's no issue. So, let's carry on with this. Right, so what we can do at this stage, seeing as we've connected all the cables up now, is attach that battery and uh, see if the camera is functioning correctly before we put the rest of the drone back together. So what I'll do, I'll do that now. And we'll switch it on from the bottom. Tap, tap and hold. Okay. And straight away I can see that the camera seems to be fine. And if I bring the camera up to the microphone, we cannot hear that vibrating sound that we were hearing before. The camera is actually right up to the microphone now and there is no vibrating sound. And if you have a look here, if I bring this up, if you have a look, see, it's it turns by itself and it maintains. So the gimbal is working fine. And what we'll do is we'll also test it on the remote now, just to make sure. So I've got the remote here in front of me and I'm gonna connect to the drone. So let's do that now. Oh, what's that? We've got to press this here. So we're going to press the power button here, one, and hold. Okay, and it should automatically connect. There you go, and if we click the go fly button, you can see that the camera is no longer vibrating. And let's see if we can turn it. And it's working. We can control the height of the camera from the remote, which we weren't able to do, to do before. Can we go any lower? Yeah, that's the lowest we can go. And then we can go back up. So I would say that was a successful repair. I'm going to put the cover back on. I'm not going to show that on the video because uh, I've already shown you how to take it off. The rest of it is quite easy. I'm going to put that cover back on and I'm going to send this back to hopefully a happy customer. Well, that's it for today. That was the first ever drone that we repaired at iRefab. And um, if we get any more in the future and there's different issues or different repairs, I'll uh, definitely make some videos and um, share them with you so you can benefit as well. But that's it for today and uh, we're going to wrap it up now. So as usual, bye for now and have a nice day.